here. Today I am going to talk you through all the steps you need to know so that you can make felt balls in bulk. I have a whole bunch here pre-made. Some of these I made during the tutorial and I've put them into a pretty garland here. There are so many different ways that you can use these felt balls in your crafting projects. I've added them to the tops of my rainbows before. So I hope that you enjoy making a whole bunch of felt balls and I'd love it if you would leave me a comment down below to tell me what you are doing with your felting balls. Before I jump straight into the tutorial, there are two things I wanna go through with you. First, I wanna show you two different felted balls and their density. So I've got these two here, whoops. This one here is a good density. I'm quite happy with it. This one here is way too squishy. So I should have worked this one a lot harder on the bubble mat to get it uh, as firm as this one. So that's just something for you to remember while you are working on your felting balls. The other thing you'll want to know is about the felting needles themselves. This one is my favorite for doing the felted prep. I got this needle actually in a set at Michael's craft store to teach me how to do my little felted penguin. Michael's does sell sets for around $15, $20 to teach you and they have everything that you need to make these cute little stuffies and I've really enjoyed doing that. So that needle came with that set and it's my favorite for that. However, I also ordered a set off of Amazon, this one here, and it came with this nice holder for your needles as well as a whole set of needles. So just just go through these needles if you end up with this set and you'll find a needle that works best for this project as well. All right, so with that said, I say jump into the project. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is prepare our wool roving. I've got this hot pink wool roving here that I'm gonna use. And the way that you're going to pull apart this wool roving is by holding your hands quite a ways away from each other and then the wool roving will come apart quite nicely. And then I just use my eyes and measure out the wool roving around the same size. If you want exact amounts, it could help to use a kitchen scale and then you can scale out your wool roving. But I find that just eyeballing it seems to work for me. So once you get all of your wool roving about the same length, then just pull it apart if it's a thicker roving. You'll get a feel for the different wools as you start playing around with them, but I find that this roving is quite thick, so splitting it down the center is helpful. Now it's time to prep the balls. You're going to use a felting needle, and you'll just gently stretch out the roving, and then start on one end and try to roll it up as tightly as you can. And I find I roll and twist, and then roll and twist, and then I'll pause and I'll stab it with the felt needle just a few times, and then I'll continue to roll and twist until I get to the very end and I'll leave just a little bit left that I can nicely smooth over around the entire ball to round it out a little bit. Watch your fingers because if you stab your finger with one of these needles, it does hurt. Then just roll it in your hands and you've got yourself a nicely prepped wool ball. I tend to do this in front of the TV. It's something that I can easily do in my lap just with my foam and a needle. Now that all of the balls have been prepped, we're gonna move on to the actual wet felting process. You'll want to lay down something that has grip. So I'm just using this bubble paper, or bubble wrap here, and I've got it face down on the counter, and then I'll lay my towel on top, and that gives my towel the grip it needs to not move around. And then I'll lay another piece of bubble wrap on top of that face up. You'll need a colander, a bowl with a lid, some soap, and some very hot water. It doesn't need to be boiling, although I do like to start with boiling water because then it takes its time to cool down. So just put a little bit of hot water in a container. Take your soap and just stir it around until you get a uh, sudsy, soapy water. You don't want too much soap, so it's something that you just kind of eyeball. And now you're gonna start the process by pouring this hot, soapy water on top of the wool balls, but just a small amount. You don't want the balls to be soaking at this point. Put the lid on, and then you're going to start shaking 
this container. You want to shake it in a way where you can tell the, the balls themselves are rolling around. They're not jumping up and down from top to bottom because that will flatten them. And do this for a while. And you can take the lid off, have a look at them. You can tell that the water has been soaked up by the wool balls. So you'll add a little bit more of the hot water. If your water has cooled down, make a new batch because you need the water to be hot for this process to work. And you'll shake them again. You'll do this process two or three times. It'll depend on how much water you've added, how large the felt balls are, and how dense you want your felt balls to be. All right, so that's how they're starting to look now. You can take them out, have a feel, see how squishy they are. You can get a feel for how much water is in them. Don't squish them too much, of course, because then you'll have to get them back to that round shape. Some of these feel like they are ready to come out, and a few feel like they might need a little bit more water. Once you feel like they're ready to come out of the bowl, just take them on out. If there's a few that might need a little bit of extra water, you can do this by hand. I don't find that the wool felt transfers from the dark colors to the light colors enough to keep these balls separate. These ones feel like they need a little bit more water, so I'm just gonna dip them in here. The water's still hot enough, and I'll hand roll that there. Now because we're working in bulk, we'll want to roll all of these balls together with a larger item, but I would suggest not using a slippery item like this plastic lid here because it makes the balls flat because they tend not to roll with the lid. So what I find works best is using a plastic cutting board because it has a little bit of grip with it now, of course, the little hairs will stick to the plastic cutting board, which will also make it difficult to use again in the kitchen. But if you scrub it enough, I find I'm able to get the hairs off. I'm just gonna hand roll these balls a minute because I flattened them with that plastic lid. And I'm gonna pick out a little fleck of wheat or something. I'm not quite sure what it is, but every now and again, I find these wool balls, depending on where you get your roving from, will still have little bits of weeds, wheat, whatever has been around the animal in it. And I find when you start rolling these balls, they tend to work themselves out to the outside of the wool, which is nice because then you can just pick them off. And once you've rolled them with your cutting board, then you can start rolling each one by hand. And what this will do is it will help the ball become a lot more dense. Another tip is to actually get your hands wet and add a little bit of soap to your hands before you start rolling these balls with your hands. That way the fibers won't actually stick to your hand, but instead the ball will begin to smooth out. And then just throw the balls into your colander because you will be rinsing them after you're done. You wanna get the soap out once you're done. So I'm just gonna work my way through all of these felt balls here. As you can tell, this ball here is not dense enough. It's quite squishy and that is not good. So it'll need a lot more work yet. Just add it to some hot soapy water and keep working it out on the bubble wrap. Another item that you could use instead of bubble wrap is um, I believe they're like bamboo mats that you can use for making sushi. And they give you that same textured feeling to help work out these felt balls. And something actually that you can use underneath the towel itself for grip is those shelf liners. But I did not have any of that handy, so I thought, why not use the bubble wrap upside down? All right, so as you can see here, this is a very soapy ball, but that doesn't matter because I'll just be able to rinse it. I like to rinse them first under warm water, and then I switch to cold water. And once I've rinsed them, I just swirl them around the colander a little bit more, try and help get some of that excess water out, but I don't touch them after this point. So here they are, all nicely rinsed out. I think they're starting to look really good. You can tell the fibers are not sticking outwards. They've all stuck to each other now. And a trick that I like to use is I just lay them out on a cookie cooling sheet, and then I'll lay it on top of one of my air vents in my house. And I find that these balls will dry with using this method within 24 hours. All right, so I've got this bowl of felted balls that I've done ahead of time, and I wanted to show you a few ways that you could decorate your felted balls before you turn them into something like garland. You can do polka dot balls, you can add swirls around the balls, you could even felt a heart onto the ball. 
I'm just going to show you how to add the polka dots on. You'll definitely need to use a felting needle once again. And what you'll do is you'll just pull off a really small amount of felting here. I should be using purple felting, but I don't have that close at hand, so I'm going to use a pink one. And then just start felting right in the center of your little piece of wool there. And then start scraping inwards all of the loose pieces until you form a bit of a circle shape. And then once you've formed that circle shape, you can actually take your needle and hover it along the top of that polka dot and just swirl it around and it'll catch all those extra little fibers and you'll be able to start pushing it into the center of the dot there. Just like that. And then keep stabbing it until you've got yourself your cute little circle. It's a bit time consuming. Again, you could do this in front of the TV. That looks about done. What do you think? Isn't that cute? That's how you can add just your little polka dots onto the balls. And I'd also like to show you how to do swirls onto your felt ball. So I've already started this one. I just took a longer piece of roving. I stretched it out, made it thin, and then I just started at the very top and started stabbing it in. And then you just continue down the line and help it along with your needle until it's swirled all the way around to the other end. I was doing this one quickly to show you. So the one end, the swirl looks a bit thin. So I think I'll go back in later and I'll add just a little bit more roving to make that line just a little bit thicker. Spin it here and then keep on going around your felt ball all the way to the end and then you've created yourself this cute little swirl on top of your felt ball. What do you think? I like it. And there you go. You've got yourself a whole lot of felt balls made out of roving that you can use for so many different projects. Of course, my favorite is garland. Happy crafting! And that's how you make a whole bunch of felted balls in bulk. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe if you want more creative content. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And if you're interested, leave me a comment down below if you want me to do tutorials on how to start making your own felted stuffies. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, and once again, what's next time? I'm gonna teach you how to make these macrame rainbows. All right, see you next time.